Over the last 15 years, Uganda's power sector has transformed from vertically integrated monopoly to a liberalized sector, having a number of players who conduct business in accordance with the rules set by the regulator. I'll use the space of time allocated to me to share with you the developments in Uganda power sector. Uh, we had to unbundle the vertically integrated Uganda Electricity Board by doing a number of things. First, we had to change the law. So we made the Electricity Act of 1999. Uh, in 1999, Uganda enacted the Electricity Act that liberalized the electricity industry. <coughs> Uh, this has led to a number of private players taking part in electricity generation on distribution businesses while the transmission remained with government. We had to unbundle distribution from generation from transmission uh, so that private sector could get involved in the areas where they had expertise. Uh, but we maintained <coughs> Uh, transmission network as a government, pro a, a government company. Now, when this was done, of course, obviously, we had interest from private sector, and indeed, at the moment, we have a number of private sectors in the generation and distribution of sectors. And then we, in 2002, the government put in place the energy policy for Uganda. Its main policy goal is to meet the energy needs of the Uganda population for the social and economic development in an environmentally sustainable manner. The energy policy has helped government focus on energy sector priorities. We also put in 2007 a renewable energy policy, uh, which policy was introduced with the overall goal of increasing the use of modern renewable energy in the country. Renewable energy policy provides policy framework for the promotion of power generation from energy sources that include, among others, uh, small hydros, biomass cogeneration, wind, solar, geothermal, and peat. Now, the priority areas in the power sector in Uganda uh, in line with the, the mandate of the, my ministry, the power sector medium-term priorities are one is to increase electricity generation capacity and transmission network. The story here will sound similar to that of my colleague in Kenya. And then two was to increase access to modern energy services through rural electrification and renewable energy development. And three, to promote efficient utilization of energy. Now, what have we achieved to date with all these policies attracting private investors and so on? What have we achieved? The famous Bujagali hydropower plant, an IPP, this project was commissioned in 2012 and is the first large hydropower plant to be delivered by a private sector in the region as a result of power sector reform in my country. Uh, this power station has since relieved the power sector from dependence on expensive thermal generation. And then we also attracted a number of small independent power producers that is within one to 20 megawatts since the liberalization of the energy sector, Uganda has registered several independent power, purchase, power producers that have executed renewable energy projects in the country. We now have a total of 105 megawatts, which has been added to the grid with cogeneration using bagasse technology contributing 40. Out of the 105 megawatts, bagasse accounts for 40, and small hydros are account for 65, all private. 
we have a policy in our country that if we are, if the site is less than 20 megawatts, 20 megawatts downwards, you own the the power station in perpetuity. Now, new projects to ensure adequate supply of power. Uh, government is developing Karuma hydropower plant. This is 600 megawatts. Uh, it's downstream, <coughs> and the project is to be com completed in 60 months. It's taking long because Karuma is bordering the national park, and the design of the power station had to be done carefully. We're doing underground power station. Everything is going to be underground. So we are taking 60 months to, to do this power station. Now, the funding for this project is by the Chinese Exit Bank and the government of Uganda under a bilateral arrangement. The contractor for this, for the EPC, is Sino Hydro Corporation Limited. At the same time, we are constructing another smaller power station called the Simba, also on the Nile. Uh, this is uh, soon after Bujagali, you reach Simba. And uh, we commenced this construction in May 2014 a few months back, and this project is a smaller one, 183 megawatts, and this will be completed within 40 months. And again, we are funding this jointly with Chinese Exim Bank, and a bilateral arrangement again, and the contractor, the EPC contractor, ECWE, which is China International Water and Electric Corporation of China, uh, CWE. Now, these projects are going to be commissioned within a few months of each other. You may ask why, but it is because we have, we have been from a very disturbing period of thermal, of light diesel power generation, costly of course, and then also load shedding because of lack of generation capacity and projected demand. That's why I want to do this, I want to put quickly this, a total of uh, 783 megawatts on the grid in the next few years. We are also looking at another site we are lucky that we have a number of sites on the River Nile. There is another site called Ayago, downstream of Karuma. Uh, we have had a memorandum of understanding with Chinese company Gezuba. We have signed this memorandum of understanding and the, the company has to continue from where we stopped with the feasibility studies. And these feasibility <coughs> studies are ongoing and we expect to start construction in 2016 of this power station. It's also a 680 megawatts. Now, other generation programs include the geothermal. We estimate 450 megawatts of geothermal in our country, while our neighboring country, Kenya, has the the Eastern Rift Valley, we have the Western Rift Valley. It splits into two, and we have springs, hot springs, in the Western Rift Valley as well. And we are very lucky that Kenya has advanced knowledge. Kenya has quite a, uh, an amount of knowledge in this field of geothermal, and we are partnering with them, and we are grateful as a country. We are partnering with Kenya to help study uh, our geothermal facilities. The challenge has been uh, that the 
the risk you take in exploration. You normally no private sector would like to, to take a risk of drilling and then finding a dry well. Uh, we are looking currently at 150 megawatts initially and also the 450 megawatts is an estimation we think we could have more than that. But as I said, we are partnering with our, our, our neighboring country, Kenya, the Republic of Kenya, to study this field. And then also we have we have discovered oil, and uh, this is a new geological field, and we, we are testing the fields. We are testing, testing the flows in the fields, but as the policy government has said, we will not flare this crude, which we are using, which we are getting during the testing of the oil fields. So we have a reservoir of this crude and we are going to use this crude to generate electricity and we are planning 53 megawatts. Uh, the studies are ongoing and we have developed these templates and feeding tariff to reduce transaction costs and time. For these small projects we said here is a standard template of agreement, implementation agreement, power purchase agreement. So if you're interested, look at it, and then we don't waste time. We sign this agreement, and to, with it, there's a, a, a tariff, a tariff, a feeding tariff. Uh, because of the, the intricacies of capitalizing these projects, we have also formed the Uganda Energy Credit Capitalization Company, a financial institution wholly owned by the government, and uh, this is to provide support in form of credit enhancement instrument to local financial institutions. Those who have been involved in this field will agree with me that sometimes when you have a project a power project, the banks may not, if you go to them, they may not follow your arguments very quickly. So we have put in place a company which can help that. And it is yielding good results. It's yielding good results. Perhaps you know that my country is only 15% electrified, unlike my colleagues here of 32 still low, but ours is the lowest in the, in the region, 15% electrified. So we have used this company. Last week, actually, I was inaugurating this program. We have used this company, Uganda Energy Credit Capitalization Company, to negotiate with the bank where we will put some money to be lent to people who want to be connected because we want rapid connection. So if you do not have the upfront money, the capital, to get your house connected or your business connected, some of them have been in the rural using diesel. We have now taken power there. So they may not have the capital to change from diesel sets to, to electricity, to, to, to grid, to the grid. And therefore, we have this arrangement in place to lend money to them. Very nice uh, interest rates and uh, two years payback period. And uh, it's working. It's working very well. And we use this company, Uganda Energy Credit Capitalization Company, to handle that aspect. Now, we are also implementing Global energy tr transfer feed-in tariff, usually called get fit. And this is incentivizing private sector to develop up to 170 megawatts grid-connected power from renewable energy sources in addition to 20 megawatts from solar in the next three to five years. Now the 170 megawatts will be mainly from small hydros, 
cogeneration and bagasse. Construction of GetFit projects is expected to commence early next year. A number of private companies have been licensed to generate power from small hydros and studies are ongoing. We still have some more sites uh, for anyone who may be interested. Now, if you have done all this, then you have to address the power access. So in order to increase access to electricity, government has planned to undertake the construction of several transmission lines to evacuate power from generating plants. Karuma to the load center in Kampala is like 264 kilometers and will use 400 kV, a transmission line 400 kilovolts from Karuma to the load center. We have to improve on the ring from the oil fields, I said, we are going to do a 396 of 220 kV and then over 1,500 of 30, 132 kV. Load shedding. Load shedding is rationalization of power. You say today this region should be off and tomorrow it is your turn to be off. But you can do that when power is sitting in, a, in Ethiopia. That's why my colleague here said we have a system, an aggressive program of interconnecting the region. Of interconnecting the region. A number of interconnection projects between Uganda and neighboring countries of Kenya, Tanzania, and Rwanda are in progress. This has already been mentioned. But let me just say that they include 220 kV, Uganda, Kenya regional interconnection. From time immemorial, we have been connected with Kenya, but this line is now weak at 132, so we are uplifting it to 220 kV. And by next year, this line should be completed. 220 kV, Uganda, Rwanda, this is a new one. And 220 kV, Uganda, Tanzania. Uh, we had already interconnection with Tanzania, this is an upgrade. And then this is a new one, 220 KV, Uganda DRC, Democratic Republic for Congo. And then we have the other one, 400 KV, Uganda South Sudan. Now, the, these new interconnections will need, of course, obviously, substations. Some of the substations exist. They will need to be upgraded, and some new ones will be constructed constructed we we'll have a rigorous program to increase access to modern energy services through rural electrification and as i said we are only 15 percent electrified we need to take this by 2040 we need to take this to beyond 70 percent our target is 100% 2040, but if we don't achieve it, at least we want to be at 70% electrification rate. We are starting with the district headquarters, production centers, and community that create nuclei for rural social and economic development. Now, this delivery mode includes the extension of the grid, decentralization of the grids, if you have an isolated uh, site, you develop it and develop load around it. The West Nile region is such an example. Too many hydro sites being developed and uh, there is line construction in the region. And this is important because then after a while when the load is it's sizable, then you can extend the grid to the area. Then we can also have solar PV for some very far villages, those villages which are very far from the, the main grid. We are partnered with telephone companies, the mobile telephone companies. <coughs> they have mass <coughs> They have the telephone mass in those 
very far distant places, and then they are running diesel sets. Every time they go to drive diesel to the to the power station, to check on the generators, and the diesels can be also stolen. So we have discussed with them and said, look, if you put solar in that place and sell some of the electricity to the village, would it not be a good idea? So they've said yes. First of all, it would be a saving to them, knowing that the solar panels will be safe because the villagers are benefiting from, from the, the power produced by the solar panels and then they charge a little fee to the villagers for connecting to their houses. In conclusion, there is progress in implementing government plans to provide adequate and reliable power supply in Uganda. In addition to the large power hydro plants, a number of renewable energy projects are planned for development as a, as a means of diversifying power supply and improving energy security. The use of a country's oil and gas resources for power generation will also foster energy security. Development of various energy sources provides a tremendous opportunity for investment in the power sector. For example, uh, we have, for example, private sector is called to seize opportunity. Investment in the power sector include opportunities in the hydropower development, participation in public-private partnership, as I said before, contribution to equity, participation in engineering, procurement and construction, EPC contract, supply of equipment in the project. Opportunities in distribution and transmission lines include contractors for the EPC, supply of equipment for the DNT distribution and transmission lines and substations such as transformers, cables, towers and so on, and investment in the rural energy and energy efficiency. Uh, we have small hydro sites that have so far been identified with an estimated power potential of 250 megawatts. A number of sites are available for development. Co-generation capacity expansion through joint partnership with sugar factories and, of course, dissemination of solar photovoltaic system in the rural area, as I've already said. We're already doing this with a, a private power company. And then supply of energy saving equipment, such as lightning and so on. So we have opportunities. We are trying our best in order to meet our demands in the shortest possible time. What we don't have is time. What we don't have is time. So uh, if the private sector is among you, we can have a discussion after this in order to see how we can, we can contribute towards helping us achieve our objectives. I thank you very much. Sorry if I took long, but I could have taken longer. Thank you very much. Thank you.